Hi. We've been doing a, a series of training videos on the subject of uh, subjective refraction. And we've been keeping it fairly simple up until now. Um, we've been dealing just with the equipment that you need and how to achieve that best vision sphere. But we know that most people who have amotropia, who have refractive error, have what we call astigmatism to some degree or another. And uh, if the astigmat astigmatism is very small, it, it may not need to be dealt with. But if the astigmatism is slightly more severe, then um, we really need to try and correct their vision using toric lenses. So we're going to look at a process, a technique called cross sill, which is a, a subjective refractive technique for assessing whether a, a patient has astigmatism for assessing how much astigmatism they have and how much cylindrical power they need to correct that astigmatism and thirdly where the axis or the orientation of that cylindrical power needs to be to correct for that astigmatism. So there are three things that we're going to be looking at whilst we're doing this cross sill technique. I'm going to start with just by going through the equipment that you'll need to do this and you'll need a slightly more sophisticated chart than what we've been looking at so far. We have a chart here that has a Snellen chart which we all know it, it gives us um, a measurement of their visual acuity. We have a target here which is a two concentric circles in a white background so um, that is what we use when we're actually doing cross sill and then we have a durochrome. Now I'm going to explain the durochrome to begin with. The durochrome has the red and the green target and they've got two concentric circles in each of those targets. Now sometimes those circles are, are continuous circles, sometimes they're just uh, circular dots that are, that are arranged in a circular fashion. But the durochrome is a very in, a useful test for us to do. So what we need to do to begin with is that we need to put the best vision sphere into the trial frame. So we put the, the trial frame onto the patient, we occlude one eye, so let's just say we're doing the right eye first. So we occlude the left eye and then we put the best vision sphere into the back of the trial frame. We then get them to look at the chart, which will be six meters away, and we get them to look at the durochrome. Now, if the target, the red and the green, are equally clear and sharp, we know that the best vision sphere is doing its job and that job is to put the circle of least confusion onto the retina. So when the red and the green targets are equally clear, we know that that circle of least confusion is on the retina. Now let me explain what that circle of least confusion is. An astigmatic eye has two principal focal points. So it's creating two kind of images or a long blurred image but there are two principal focal points. Now those focal points may be in front of the retina or they may be behind the retina or they may be either side of the retina depending on the type of astigmatism that they have. The process of cross sill is to enable us to bring those two principal focal points together to create one clear image that is on the retina in the right place. So that's what we're trying to achieve. Now in between those two principal focal points is what we call the circle of least confusion and this is where you get the best compromised vision. And when we do that best vision sphere um, test, when we're doing subjective refraction to get the best vision sphere, we are we are, we are, we are ass assessing what power is required to put that circle of least confusion onto the retina. So when we're looking at the durochrome and we, we see the red and the green targets are just the same, we know that that best vision sphere is, is correct. If the red target is slightly clearer, then we need to add a bit of minus. If the, min if the green target is slightly clearer, then we have to add a bit of plus okay so that we want to get the red and the green the same now some practitioners with younger patients or those who have got good reserves of accommodation they like to make the green target slightly clearer because it forces that patient 
to accommodate and to put that circle of least confusion onto the retina using accommodation. It's like a, a, a safety method just to make sure that that circle of least confusion is actually where it needs to be. Now, they just use a very, very slight bit of minus, okay? So it's just to make the green target just slightly, slightly sharper than the red. But when you get to that point, you know you've got the circle of least confusion where you need it to be. And from that point, you're then able to start the cross sill uh, process. Now, before you start doing the cross sill, you get the patient with that best vision sphere in the frame to look at the Snellen chart. Because what we need to do is to assess their visual acuity with the best vision sphere in place because that will help us to assess how much astigmatism they have. So if they can only read, say, 624, the third line down, with the best vision sphere in place, the chances are that their astigmatism is quite severe, so they will need more cylindrical power added to their prescription. If they can see fairly well down to the bottom, maybe say 6.9 or 6.12, then they don't need so much. So I would say that if they can see 6.24 with the best vision sphere in place, that they will probably need round about minus 2 sill. If they can get further down to say 6.12, maybe they just need a minus 1 sill. So there is a, there is a, a kind of a scale that you can refer to, to to help you assess what you're dealing with before you start the cross sill process. So just to recap and to help us visualize a little bit better what is going on with astigmatism, I've included a, a little picture here which shows an eye that, that is astigmatic and it is producing two principal images in front of the retina. So it is a myopic eye so we need to put minus prescription in front of that eye to get those images back onto the retina. And uh, we use the cross cylinder refraction technique to calculate the power of the cylindrical element of the prescription and also in which direction that power needs to run in order for both those images to come together in one place and for those images to be formed together on the retina. So that is what we're, we're trying to achieve, achieve with this cross sill technique. Now this diagram is to demonstrate the circle of least confusion. And um, basically you have a toric lens in the picture there and it, a toric lens has two focal points. In between those two focal points you have this circle of least confusion. And as the, uh, the, the slide shows, the, it, this is the best compromised image location in a system with astigmatism. Now we use the duochrome chart to get that circle of least confusion onto the retina. So when the patient is wearing their best vision sphere in the trial frame, we then get them to look at the duochrome. If the red is slightly sharper, then we need to add a little bit of minus prescription, but if the green is slightly sharper then we need to add a little bit of plus prescription just to get those two images, the red and the green, looking the same. They may not be very sharp but we need to get them looking more or less the same. Now as I mentioned in the, the video, some practitioners like to just get the green a little bit sharper, which means that the image, that, that circle of least confusion is slightly behind the retina. And what that means is that the patient then needs to use accommodation to bring it onto the retina itself. And it just helps to make sure that that circle of least confusion is where it needs to be. And when we've got that on the retina, then we can start the cross sill technique. It should just be pointed out to end with that the duochrome test is only really going to work if your patient has a visual acuity which is 6-9 or worse. So if their acuity is better than 6.9 then don't worry about doing the duochrome. Well just to end with I thought I'd include this table which provides a rough idea of what a prescription might be corresponding with the unaided visual acuity. So for example if someone can see only 6.18 unaided then you can expect their prescription to be round about 
plus or minus 1 with, and if they've got astigmatism with a sill of perhaps up to minus 2. So it is just a rough guide and uh, it's just there as a point of reference so that when you assess their visual acuity with the uh, best um, vision sphere in the trial frame, you can then perhaps anticipate what sort of sill powers you may need uh, to use in the cross-sill process. So it's just a useful thing to have.